well, well, well. If this isn't the most redneck crap y'all have ever seen. We're back at it again, painting more, more stuff. We're getting Brandon's truck all set up. We got an eight inch super lift going on his truck, but first we gotta get it painted. The same as now it's sick tomorrow. We got some 24 by 14 Cali Summit polish on some 35. 1350 Fury MTs going on this 2014 Silverado. So if you guys are new to the channel, go ahead, go down, hit the subscribe button. Go follow my boy on Instagram. The link will be down in the description as well. But this is his eight inch super lift. If you guys are OGs on the channel, you guys remember his cat eye that he had that had the 24 by 14s on 33s with the four and a half inch rough country and the inch and a half level. And now we've got an eight inch super lift going on it. We're at this thing sitting right. We've got some paint over here. Unlike when we painted my lift on my Chevy way out there, this lift is a base coat, clear coat style. So I learned the hard way and ordered a single stage paint on accident. And so luckily Brandon can learn from me not to make that same mistake. So we've got a base coat right here. This is actually the original color of his old truck which is stealth gray right there so that's what color we're doing everything we're doing the drop brackets the strut spacers sway bar drop brackets we've got our spindles our lift blocks we're painting all that we're leaving the u-bolts and the shocks the u-bolts will stay black and the shocks are silver but we're doing everything else in this color now Normally I would like to have the garage door almost completely shut and leave a little gap, but unfortunately the amount of pieces that we have, we had nowhere to hang them from unless the garage door was up. Like you guys see, I'm hanging from the trusty dusty zip ties, but this was the only way to do it. So we're just gonna work with it. We're gonna back these vehicles all the way down to the end of the driveway so we don't get any overspray on them and get everything set up. If you guys are new here and haven't seen any of my painting videos, just using a Husky paint gun from Home Depot. Either Home Depot or Lowe's. I don't remember. It's like 60 bucks. But I painted my entire truck with it and my entire lift with it. And now we're about to paint his lift with it. We've already got it all stuffed up. They're all already powder coated black, but completely stuffed up. And now we're going to get ready to shoot it. So stay tuned. Okay, so obviously we're new in this whole painting thing. So he was smart enough and got a whole printout sheet from the paint shop. And the mixing ratio here is eight to one half by four. This is a nascent paint, it's a nascent base coat. And I've never seen this eight and a half to four. And if you look at this paint cup, this mixing cup, there's no eight and a half by four. There's an eight to one to one, which is not the same. It would have to be eight to 0.5 by four. Uh, so that is not the same. So I found a little form online where someone else is using the same exact paint and he came up with the equation for say eight ounces of paint, you're gonna need four ounces of reducer and then half an ounce of activator. So I went ahead and marked it out because we have an ounce line on this cup. So we marked out the eight ounces to 12 ounces to half an ounce. So if you guys ever run into the same problem, that's what I suggest to do. And obviously if this doesn't work, I'm going to tell you later in the video that it, it doesn't work. But this is what we concluded after our little internet search. So I suggest you guys do the same. Look at the flake in that. That looks sick. Screw the sides of it. Yeah, so just make sure you stir the crap out of that. And then pour to that first line, and then this just I'd shake the can and then pop the lid off of it, and then just pour it in. Because this doesn't really have to be stirred. There's no, there's no material in it. Yeah. And then same thing goes for that, and I'll pour it into the drum. This is gonna uh, look sick. I'm excited. I'm okay. really excited. Yeah, that's why there's purple all over my toolbox. Yeah, I kind of made a little bit of an oopsie. <laughs> you can't tell I've made the oopsie before. I can already tell the people in the comments, you idiot, you don't know how to f***ing pour paint? 
Oh, dude, that is sex right there. God. <laughs> oh my God, that is going so good. The camera like doesn't even do it justice. It doesn't pick up all the flake. Uh, you're not gonna hurt the toolbox if you can't tell I ran it with purple. Sorry. <laughs> Just beat it. <laughs> kind of reminds me of moonshine. It's just like, is that an alcoholic thing to say? <laughs> Pretty damn close. And this reducer reminds me of moonshine. Like, to a weird extent, it kind of smells like it. Just a, a hair. I would do a little bit more. Yeah, that should be good. Ooh, it's doing its old dancey dance. You need your respirator. Nah, you're not wearing one. I'll buy it with you later. God. Dude, that is pretty. Everything is turning out. Camera does not do it justice. It's like a bluish dark gray. It's supposed to be the Greystone Metallic of his old truck. But I think because we didn't use a primer, we just left the black powder coat. It made it a little bit darker. I think with a gray primer, it would have been exactly like his old truck. But I think it turned out absolutely sick. We're about to spray our clear coat. I effed up and got a run right here. But I guess just that being the only run is better than everything else having a run on it. But it came out sick, so we're gonna mix up our clear, spray our clear, and I'll pick you guys up and show you what it looks like after that. But it is looking sick. Here is our finished product you see how reflective that is we got we did one light coat of clear two wet coats i mean you guys can see the reflection in that drop bracket they came out incredible i definitely can say because this is my first time ever using a base coat clear coat style paint that uh definitely definitely a lot easier than spraying single stage metallic like this is night and day difference compared to what I painted the truck in. If you guys are ever painting, I strongly suggest to start out with a single stage metallic and then jump over here to a base coat, clear coat style paint because you'll basically already be a professional when it comes time to spray. Because uh, this, it's like night and day difference compared to what I painted the Chevy with. When I say painting the Chevy was one of the hardest things ever, 
literally you had to spray that paint absolutely perfect to have a small amount of orange peel. I mean like perfect to have orange peel. If you sprayed it anywhere besides perfect, it was just gonna be golf ball. Not, not even orange peel, golf ball. Like, I do not know what I'm doing. And I, I think I got a pretty close to factory finish on the paint on these drop brackets. I mean, on everything. It's not just the drop brackets that look like this. If you come over here and look at the blocks, I mean, Look at that reflection. So, definitely, definitely suggest learning with single stage metallic because when you jump over to something like this base coat, clear coat, you're basically already gonna be a professional. So, it's 2 a.m. now. Uh, I think it's, it's either just after one or two. It's 1.47 right now. You guys can see that. 1.47, we're gonna let these dry for about an hour and then we're gonna pull them down so we can shut this garage door. Uh, we can leave the drop bracket hanging. We can leave all that over there. We really just have to let the sway arms, the sway bar drop brackets, and the strut spacers dry and pull them down. Everything else can stay how it is. Just can't leave the garage door open overnight. So, getting some flashbacks to the Daytona Crunch. Kind of scary. But uh, I'll pick you guys up in the morning when we jump into tearing apart his truck it should uh should go pretty freaking good morning everything is 100% dry give you guys a better look at his truck now in the daylight but it is a 2014 Chevrolet Silverado 1500 it's two-wheel drive and right now I just got a leveling kit on what are these 32s 33s 33s it's a leveling kit on 33s now uh, he doesn't have his factory bolts for the uh, strut in the lower control arm so we're gonna be putting the leveling kit back on so it's a eight inch super lift but it's gonna be sitting at about nine and a half inches and then we've got the 24 by 14s on 35s in here these are cali summits and polished with some fury country hunter mts 35 13 50 24 or yeah, 1350. But they're basically brand new. He bought these like two and a half months ago when he ordered his lift and just got his lift in this week. So that's why we're getting it all painted and put it on this weekend. So uh, now it's time to jack the truck up and get started. All right, and about 45 minutes later, my side is completely apart. We've got our spindle out, we've got our rotor. We've got our lower control arm, our wheel, wheel hub assembly, spindles out, everything separated. Brandon has his side almost apart. He's got the sway bar coming apart right now. You can leave it. Because when you drop this, it'll come out and we still have to drop that. Yeah. But uh, he's got his side almost apart it's about time to start getting all the new pretty stuff put in the truck so like i said pulling this apart um of course i'm gonna start by taking the tire off but you want to take the tire off uh we started 
We did tie rod, which I believe was a 18 millimeter, but uh, did tie rod, upper control arm, got those separated. I went over and did my sway bar bracket, took that off, then I did brake caliper, set that on that block of wood, and I did the rotor, which is a little screw that screws in to the wheel hub, which is right there, that you have to pull out, pull your rotor off, and then got the three bolts on the wheel hub and pulled that out and once that was set off to the side I then got the spindle separated from the upper ball joint and the lower ball joint I separated the upper one first got it pulled up out of the way and used the hammer to beat down the top of the spindle create uh, gravitational downforce on the lower control arm which will pop it out a lot easier than got the lower control arm bolts out uh, in order to take the back bolt out you actually have to drop the sway bar, well, the sway arm in general, uh, but we're putting drop brackets on that anyway, so it had had to come out either way. It doesn't really matter, but if you're watching this and you're not putting a lift on your truck and you want to replace your lower control arm, just saying you're going to have to drop the sway bar arm to actually get that back bolt out, which is kind of stupid in my opinion. Engineers don't ever think about when it comes time to repair anything, but got that all apart. Got everything sitting over here. I'm going to wait for him. And then we'll probably do our drop brackets, get them put in, get our lower control arm put in on those. That way we have lower control arm on. Probably then go to our spindles, then do strut towers. Should be super easy reassembly. I mean, it took us 45 minutes and we've got every single thing apart. So this worked out really well. Now, well, I ain't pitch y'all up in a hot minute, but we got this side almost back we got the drop brackets in and we had to do a little massaging to uh, get the front cross member in uh, the, the persuader in that scenario was this grinder the front cross member just would not you know we had to grind a little bit off and then still beat it to get it in take a hammer and separate the rear to you know smash it out a little bit persuade it and uh, to get the rear cross member in but like I told you, we're putting the leveling kit on with this 8-inch super lift. So, angles are pretty, pretty rough at a full droop. But, he does plan on taking the leveling kit out. Um, and over here, so in the instructions, it says to run the jam nut for the tie rod in. All the way down and cut an inch and a quarter off the inner tie rod. Well, we did that and still, the toe is... It, it's hard to tell on camera, but it's still a little bit out. I mean, it was like three, four inches out earlier, and we've got it to where it's probably a quarter, quarter of an inch, an inch out. Somewhere, quarter inch to half an inch out. Uh, but that's, that's kind of aggravating. So this is my first time ever doing a lift on a 07 to 18. Does, uh, the 07 to 13 is the same body style and then 14 15 is the same body style you have 16 to 18 that has a different like front end kind of on it it's, but uh it's my first time ever doing a lift on anything like this and i'm kind of aggravated with it because uh like the way rough country did this you don't you don't cut anything like that like this is aggravating because now we're we're trying to figure out if uh if we've got to do some more cutting on the actual tie rod end itself because it's still not screwing down all the way and we followed super lifts instructions and it's still not working right we've got it on that side with the jam that off screwed all the way in and still is not enough so we're wondering if we're gonna have to cut the tie rod end itself cut half an inch off it so we can get it a little bit further in because right now there's no jam nut on that side and there's also no no adjustment on that side it's ran all the way down and it's still not enough so uh super lift design that shit a little bit different put when you forge your spindles and you've got the cast for them push that tie rod end out just a little bit i mean push it out an inch adjust your adjust how that is to where instead of it coming out and turning in come straight out with it simple as that you wouldn't have all these problems i don't know why people make that shit so difficult you've got a cast for that you literally just pour iron into a cast and it forms that. Design it different. All right, guys. So after um, reading instructions a little bit more about what we're supposed to do here, I hate this lift even more now. So 
they send you this die that is sitting right there it is used to create threads on something well if we come in here and look at this inner tie rod it's tapered well not supposed to be tapered to a tie rod but the threads come down and then it's larger up here they want you to take said die and create more threads well we've created from about right here see if you guys can focus on my finger you've created from about right here up with the die and they want you to do an inch and a quarter so that's like up to here and we are literally holding this with a crescent wrench and channel locks and turning this thing as hard as we absolutely can and it's taking everything we have to do this so if you were to be putting this lift on by yourself unless you had a inch and a half socket like this in a deep well and an impact and something to hold this as well there's no way you're doing this by yourself I think that is the absolute worst design I have ever seen on a lift and I've done some pretty stupid stuff on vehicles and that overall is just retarded if you were by yourself there's no way in hell you're doing this unless like I said you have a deep well inch and a half socket and you're able to put that die on an impact and run it down that is the only way possible because we're two decently sized men doing this and we're having the hardest time getting this together we'd already be done with the front of this lift and on the back of the truck by now if it wasn't for this so i understand why the install time said eight hours because we thought we'd have it done in four hours but we spent a good hour and a half now dealing with this fucking tie rod and still not done so uh Good job, Super Lift. You killed this one. Well guys, here is the finished product. We've got a eight inch super lift with a inch and a half level on some 24 by 14 Cali Summit polished on a 35 1350 Fury Country Hunter MTs. Looks pretty sick. Now, I, I do have some complaints about the super lift. So I'm not ragging on them, anything like that. But I, I do have some experience with lifting vehicles. I haven't lifted hundreds or thousands or anything like that. But I've put on, I'd probably say, eight, eight to the ten lifts throughout my life. Um, worst one I've ever done. Worst one I've ever seen. Worst one I've ever done. Now, like I said earlier in the video, I've never done anything on this body style truck. Um, but this is this is pretty ridiculous. So we had to take apart the parking brake cable reroute it over top the axle that took a solid 45 minutes to get everything unstuck taken apart route it over the axle and get our blocks in get our shocks in what wasn't terrible we got that done but up here was just stupid so the the inner tie rod thing i told you guys about that aggravated me the most but got it in got it done and then bolts weren't labeled properly and they have you use bolts that they give you to mount the sway bar drop bracket to the frame and then you reuse the bolts with nuts that they give you it just did not make sense and with the shocks 
in the rear, which was very time consuming. So these are Bilstein, I believe they're 5100s, but they come with just bushings in them. And Bilstein sends you sleeves to put in them. Well, okay, you, you pull it all apart, you think, all right, let's just go ahead and put this together. No, not, not the way Superlift designed it. Superlift designed it for you to take the bushings that Bilstein put in there, you take those out, and then you put bushings and sleeves in that Superlift sent you so you can reuse all your hardware instead of just using the bushings and sleeves that Bilstein put in there and just send you new bolts to use. That doesn't, doesn't make sense, but whatever. We got it all together. We've already went for a test drive, and yes, he has my old spikes on there. That's why the spikes are purple. Uh, he's still waiting for his lug nuts to come in, so we just used my old ones since I put brand new ones on this. We reused my old ones on here, and when his come in, just need to give these back to me. It doesn't really matter, but that's why there's purple spikes on it, and you know, nothing purple on the truck. He is planning on leaving the steps until he did some amp steps. Yes, it would look better with the steps off, but still doesn't look bad, and it's still you're still able to drive it so with a eight inch super lift and a inch and a half level still had to trim some of the actual bumper itself of course it's going to hit the valence but it kind of is ridiculous the fact that this is a eight inch kit and an inch and a half level and it still hits the bumper on 35s blows my mind but we were out here until 2 a.m this morning uh, between the inner tie rod situation yesterday and then we got all the sleeves that Bilstein sent put in the shocks and then found out that we had to take all that back out which made it even harder to get apart um, we wasted a good hour and a half with the shocks and wasted probably did two hours with the inner tie rod ordeal of having to cut the inner tie rod and then uh, put some new threads on there with the die they send you just god it did not make sense just stupid and you have to take the whole belly pan off so this right here because the way Superlift designed it they've got the little bracket that comes up for whatever reason if it would have just been straight across we could have left the belly pan on there <sighs> guys did not did not make a lot of sense to me honestly I'm not impressed with this lift whatsoever but we did take it for a test drive um, ride isn't too bad it is a little stiff but it does have a leveling kit on it and brand new shocks in the rear so things gotta settle just a little bit but got some vibration in the tires um he bought these used and the tires were almost brand new and he didn't have his lift yet so he was worried that the guy was selling them because they didn't ride very good and he wasn't able to test it and well we took it for a ride and there's a shape from like 40 to 55 miles an hour and we're 99 percent sure it's coming from these tires uh which sucks um but that's what fury is known for not bash and fear anything but they have a very 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 bad reputation of not not riding smooth they've got a bad bad reputation of not balancing out properly and vibrating going down the road and well that's exactly what they did so he's looking at get some toyos or nittos on here and get rid of that vibration but did a little trimming right there and got it all squared away. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you made it this far. If you did, go go ahead and hit the like button. Go hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Just that, that couple seconds that doesn't cost you anything really boost my channel. It really lets YouTube know that you guys like my videos and it will recommend it to more people. So do that and help your boy out. Just hit the like, hit the subscribe button. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.